I'll be taking a length of toilet paper in my pocket just for emergencies. Those turret things were on the outside, but maybe there's different. Oh, well, it's obviously the right side. Honestly, I thought I'd just throw a blue behind it when we get the line up and shoot an element, and then that would become the basis for the painting that we pin into it. Right. I know it doesn't look like the road's quite centered, does it? It looks like the whole thing should slide over. As Gandalf comes here, the camera will start dollying and it'll eventually dolly and pan off the wall and through yes. into the thing there. But yeah, okay, good. Well, it'll be good, it'll be great. It'll, be, it'll actually make it a, a, a really good shot. I think so. A really nice shot, yeah. Okay, good. I think we're late getting away. I think we're a little late getting away. We need to just whiz another one. Just to try and get, get in a bit tighter, but um, we might need you at the moment that just the way that your staff falls, it goes across your face a little bit. So, oh. might need to either just hold it back slightly or to take it out slightly. We've been shooting for about four months now, and we finally get to start to do things with the villains. Like, we've done a lot of um, shooting with the hobbits and Aragorn and our heroes, and it's great to finally get the dark part of the story. Um, on film to start to set up the sort of the opposition as it were so it's good it'll be fun to do this stuff all righty we are ready folks we're shooting this light this is a shot that uh, reveals uh, a flock of crows that have been sent out by saruman to spy on the fellowship flying down through a hole in the ground down into the caverns below isengard so in order to do this shot we're using four different sets of different scales because the crows fly deep down into the earth and these are caverns one layer below the next so this is the first cavern above that we've got a model of the of the ground plane which is a much smaller scale come down into a much bigger set, set which is this one fly down swoop around through there come out through a hole at the end of that set into another set <clears throat> fly out of that and into another set, and in that set we have a live action shot of Sarah Man shot on blue screen. In order to do this, of course, each set has to have a mat at the end of it so that we can insert the fourth, the, the set that's coming up, in through the hole. So we essentially stack these things up from back to front, so essentially they're all stacked, set, mat, set, mat, set, mat, all the way back up to the surface. Um, so the other one needs to come towards Adding the details takes quite a lot of time. Uh, we find that um, we need to add a lot more detail than what you might think just to, to get to the level of reality where um, even a lot of the detail becomes subconscious but to the eye it's, that's when it becomes realistic. This is a smoke reader that we use to determine exactly the density of smoke and also to make sure that the density is kept constant during these, each of these passes because the passes take about 30, about 29 minutes to shoot, so we have to keep the smoke absolutely constant during that whole time. Now the reason for the smoke <clears throat> is that, of course, this set is representing something that's extremely large, and in order to get the feeling that, that things that are actually only maybe a meter away are actually four, 15 meters away, we have to build some kind of atmospheric perspective into it, and that's done by shooting with a very light hazing of smoke over the whole set. So we shoot it in the clean air, and we also shoot it in the, in the smoky air, and then when we put it together, we can combine those, so when we're far away from something it's quite hazy and as we get closer we can dissolve from the smoky pass to the to the clear pass you have the feeling that you're traveling much further than, than you actually are it's, it's a it's a basic trick of, of miniature photography to try to create the, the feeling that something's a lot bigger than it really is attack attack me whoop what no attack me attack. i'm going to do that oh yeah you attack first here second here they're not too much trouble if they get too much trouble you just pick them up and they can't do anything no, you attack me. Attack, attack, you attack. attack. Well, I can't see them actually having the sword and going clang, clang. They might have to occasionally, but, it, but as you say... Or maybe you know, like uh, on run up on a piece of wall so it's the same height. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's right. Well, you could do that. We yeah. could get him yeah. doing that. The two to the left, you two, you have to cower against this, and then Sam says, get back, you, get back. you villains, I, I forget the term, but anyway, get back, you so-and-so. 
Okay. Yes, sir. Get back in here. Wow. Bad backward fall. You'd look where you were going and then you went back like this. Uh, okay. Hey, come on. We put your. Give him another mat. Oh, extend that. Give him another. Excellent. Okay, that's good. Half him up. Great. Not so great. We've got to do another. It was almost yeah. great, but not quite. Gentlemen, to make it work better, crowd him. Right? Fuck it, wrong place. Five, six. Yep. That's why it's high. Yep. <laughs> I want your head to touch back. Yeah, it's on his spring. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, try it. Go ahead, go ahead. Right, yeah. Go on. Boom! <laughs> This works out well, where you can yeah. sort of probably not, not not use the mask very much too, as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be quite good, won't it? If you don't use the mask, then what about your eyes? Do you reckon it will be contact? No, no, they'll, they'll be fine. I mean, let, we'll, we'll just have a look at the uh, the footage, but I think we're not gonna gonna notice. I think we'll be we'll be sufficiently far away. Yeah. I think I think you'll be okay. I think this is, this will be better than the mask, yeah. won't it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Martin, you look just like him. Lucky, lucky man. He's wow. So can we just strip everybody? Strip everybody down to their um, jackets. And uh, need some so keep the trousers on. Stand on the line. Act like you're going to wait for the bus. And then when I say mingle, you mingle. But don't cross the line. Because then you, you lose points. Door camera. Wait. Set. Your call, sir. Okay, and if you could, uh, if you just just do a little bit of, you know, rocking around. Nice to see you. Oh, you look like a kind of. Lovely. Maybe oh. How's the missus? Good one. Yeah. Good. Right. Yeah. Hello. Right. What's your problem? What's your problem? Well, what up, mate? What up? I'll show you. Let me let, let me demonstrate. Okay. So we all we all start here, right? And just just go across to here, and then uh, and, and be looking looking around left and right. <laughs> it's very bizarre, isn't it? It's a good one for the old DVD. I gotta take mine with me when, when I leave. My name's Katrina Talbot, <clears throat> and I'm the back half <laughs> of Bill the Pony. We have to actually have a bit of practice on every terrain because it's different in the snow and in the mud and in the on the mountainside and in the swamp. We started um, with an agency in Wellington, Wellington Actors. Okay, can we have a bit of room, please? She said if um, we wanted to get involved in stilt walking, then we got called in to do Build a Pony. What, what we're going to do, you can see where these, foot, these footprints go up the hill here. When, to, when we're all ready, we're just going to have you to walk, we're going to have you walking up the footprints, following in single file. And when when Michael, who's playing Ganoff, gets to the end of the footprints, he stops, and everybody will position everybody behind there, and that's our starting position. Biran is then going to, who's playing Frodo, is going to be doing a little fall and a roll down the hill. Vigo's going to jump out and grab him. 
and then if we can just run the scene now this is just a wide shot we're only going to need the, the basic big movement so don't worry about dialogue as he falls and then you take it <laughs> and you're going to fall to your right and roll and fall Karen We've got the scene where we're walking through the snow. Using this product, we can make um, make something that people can walk through. And if you leave it overnight, it'll get very stiff. And then we can use it for other bits of snow. And they use it to insulate houses. It's amazing stuff. It's the best snow we've had. I'll be full of snow on the day and making an avalanche down here full of our foam snow. The actors will be going along the top of the set and creating an avalanche uh, for them to uh, be buried in. So you yeah. see them looking up going, what the hell? And the veil of snow comes down, yeah. you're not quite sure what's happened. You see Gandalf be pulled off the rock. The uh, simulated snow is a rice-based product, so it's just light and environmentally friendly and doesn't seem to hurt your eyes. The rest of all the dressings are different products, the waxes and different foams and paper and um, background. But apparently there's MSG, MSG and rice, which can't be salt. Basically it's like takeout. Hi. I'm Jamie Selker, post-producer and supervising editor on the show. I'll just pop you in here and show Pete's trailerways way on location. Come on in. Look at this. Widescreen, 34-inch flat-screen TV, audio cassettes, amp, SVHS player, DVD player, and SPB to play. Pete, well, Pete can come in here when he's got a little bit of downtime while they're setting up a difficult shot in the studio in, or location. He can come down here, can he play his rushes, select takes, or he can look at any other sort of his favourite movies. So we'll just sit down here and take a wee nap on his couch and we'll run one. When's the couch coming, John? Well, we're talking about it. Well... It should be soon. No, no one should expect me to come in here and cut without a, without a couch. <laughs> OK, <laughs> just tell Jamie, Jamie, just tell Jamie if he wants me to, t to turn up to look, to, look, to look at anything, there should be a couch here. Hey, Monday, sure. Monday sounds good. Karen's birthday, what was it, on Tuesday? Tuesday, On yes. Tuesday, it was Karen's birthday. Yeah, so he's a very old man, so we have to treat him very gingerly. It's not, it's not his size. Some people think his height makes him delicate. It's not, it's his age. He's an old man. Look, look at the, the chisel, the etch, the years of experience found on Karen's face. And later, you'll be able to see him wearing all of our faces. Is that true? Yeah, have you true. tried me on? Yes. Yes. Does it feel yes. extra good? Yes. Yeah. Brilliant. Really? Can you feel the dramatic overbite with my, yes, I my did. upper lip there? I yeah, did. You did? Yes. Don't drool in that mask. No, I won't. <laughs> any particular shot, we're going to have a floating moon yes. on, a, on a scissor. And like like be... a moon? That can... Oh, you, you mean a, a light, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if they... he wants light coming into the forest, he's screwed, yeah? No, 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 they can, they can shoot down over here. They can light above the glass. Yeah. I think we're going to be working in here predominantly with steady, steady cam myself. Yeah. Obviously sticks at times, but I yeah. don't... 
lot, a lot of, I, th I think a lot of the feel of this really suits to the camp. Yeah. And just in terms of, because it can be that slight kind of glidey kind of, yeah. I don't think it doesn't need the, the precision of, of yeah. grain and dolly, I, I don't think. It, it, it yeah. feel a little bit more loose, I think. Is Frodo at the back, is it Sam in the front? Yeah. And on action, they'll just slowly come down. Let's put Brent there and the other two tallest in these two columns. Yep. Okay, so the concept here, guys, there's going to be a lot of wind and a lot of noise and you, we're not going to be able to talk to you. So when you hear action, which is a toot on the air horn, and then one step at a time, very slowly, like you're in a funeral procession, you just start to move down towards the hobbits, okay? Hello, Jan. So can you um, just prepare me a memo to the art department, please? Can you, um, can the memo just say that Peter wants to see designs and sketches of all hand props um, before they appear on set? and that uh, Boromir's bag that was presented to me today is rejected as a piece of design. Boromir's bag? Boromir's bag is rejected as a piece of design. I, I don't like it. Okay. And that Boromir will need a bag um, within the next two or three days, I guess, so that they better come up with some ideas. Do I have my bag at this stage? Yeah, I just need to... Because I don't know if I have it at the Moria Mines. Houston, we are gold. When you give roll camera, well, there'll be 10 seconds rolling, and then Richie will give the cue action. Um, Pete will take his cue and start the air ratchet out the side, which will first pull those, the, the door frame and lintel out. Richie will take his cue from uh, the action of the rocks. After, when Richie starts on his double, there'll be 10 separate explosions quite quickly. They'll, they'll both be as loud as a 22 gunshot, but it will reverberate in here. Let's do one more of those, just for luck. It was, it was great. Lots of good fake reverbs, but nothing, nothing can beat this. Real thing. 
wanted to get out of the office. <laughs> Well, I want to hear it from wherever, where it, just what it's like. If you want to just, um, we've got um, a sequence of cave troll voices that Peter has listened to and likes. We're going to try to play those through the speaker here and get the natural ambience of the tunnel. Mostly that'll be used for off-camera shots in balanced tomb. Hey, Dave, do you want to power that thing on? It's on now. It's on? Is it pretty loud? No, it's just pretty scary. <laughs> Once the workshop have finished the physical sculpt, we bring it over into the digital world and the way we form that bridge between the, the, the physical model in the workshop and the digital model here in where the digital is with the uh, 3D handheld laser scanner. It's what we use to get the model into the computer. In the old days we used to animate you know, just one frame, you know, frame A to frame Z and that was it. You wind up spending as much time probably animating a scene as you would doing it in stop motion uh, or maybe even more time. You spend that time refining the work and making it as good as you can make it rather than uh, just, you know, s slowly, carefully, you know, walking the tightrope of uh, stop motion where you go from frame A to frame Z. But Gimli backs into there, mm -hmm. the cave troll thinks, right, I've got him. Mm -hmm. You know, that's like, there's nowhere to go in there, mm -hmm. you can't yeah. dot and dive. The cave troll comes for him with his hand, and just as the hand's coming towards Gimli, then... <laughs> <laughs> Except for the uh, two hobbits jumping on the troll's back, really most of the scene up till that point had been played on the floor and not on the mezzanine or on the second level, right? And, but, you know, getting, getting into the set before the set was even built, when it was just built in the computer, I found that, well, you know, if we get a lot of battling going on on the second level as well as the first, you'll be at you know you'll be at, at troll eye level, which is kind of neat because everything else, everything in the storyboards is sort of you know looking up at him the whole time. Now, what what I think would be good mm -hmm. to, to try and depending on how long this lasts, is that, is that the full length of it? Is it? Yeah, it could probably be about half that length. Yeah, probably just be a so, Yeah, seems like yeah. Aragorn would come from there right. and just okay. like get him and get yeah, him in okay. the flank. Sure. Yeah. Once you have that basic choreography in the miniature digital set, what you could do was then put on virtual glasses and see that choreography from the point of view of a camera you were holding in these glasses. So you grab the camera and you run around and suddenly you're in the set with this big troll and you start covering it like a news cameraman, basically. Uh, and he wanted it to have a sort of slapdash, non-compositionally uh, uh, oriented feel, I think. Feel like it's like everything's being grabbed. What's challenging about Peter is his, his dumb ideas, you know, because he said, he said, let's have Legolas, you know, run up the chain on, and jump over the troll. And I thought, that's really dumb. But, you know, and I wouldn't have come up with that. So let's see if there's a way to, you know, to, to stay with that and not talk him out of it. Because sometimes you'll, you'll, you'll hear something that's, that's out there. But, and, and just say, oh, that, that won't work, that won't work. But I've seen enough of Peter's work to know that A, he's out there, and B, he usually makes the out there stuff work. We get on the set, and Jeff Murphy's directing it. They're setting up to do Orlando running across this thing. And just as they're getting set up to do the first take, I said, Jeff, listen, why, why don't we have, can we just have him grab, uh, grab a moment in the center and pull an arrow and try to fire it into the guy's head? Because that makes him more aggressive than just, than just, you know, acrobatic. And he can try to fire it into the troll's head, and the troll will knock him off before he can fire it, right? And so we'll use, and we'll see if we can talk Peter into that. So we did, 
And then Peter thought about that for a while. He said, no, 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 no. What we're, what we're missing is, is him actually firing it, it bouncing off his head, and then him jumping off to get another, another shot at him, right? So that's sort of how that, you know, that's sort of how the collaboration has worked. Well, he'll, you know, I'll have an idea, then he'll have an idea that tops that, and I'll have another idea that tops that, and he'll have another idea that tops that. So they just keep, it keeps building, you know? Okay. Here we go. Try right another one, please. The thing that we were told by Randy and Adam was to make him not evil. You know, they, they wanted him to be more like an animal that, like a pit bull, where this is what he did well, was destroy things. And so at the end, um, they kind of wanted you to feel a little bit bad for him, that the Fellowship kind of had to kill him, but he wasn't like a, you know, like a raptor or somebody who was just pure evil trying to kill you. So at the end, there's Adam Valdez did the shot where he, you know, gets an arrow in the mouth and you kind of feel like, oh, that poor guy, you know. So that was the kind of direction we got from them. They've got to defend themselves, and the only way they can stop him is by is by finishing him off. But that doesn't mean it's a great cause for celebration when they do finish him off. And I frankly don't mind if the audience feels a little bit dirty when it's over. Being given the Balrog uh, as the first creature I had to texture was uh, quite intimidating, considering uh, it's it's the main nasty creature in uh, film one. We had the big maquette hanging on the wall that was beautifully sculptured. We took that and photographed it, and I used that as the basis of the design for the, the way the wrinkles would flow over the body. Uh, then I took photographs of elephant skin and used that um, to get the really fine detail um, into the surface texture. Uh, I think we have a total of around 14,000 total, total textures on the Balrog. And uh, it's, it can be a lot of work to actually just merge the different layers together, especially with a creature like this that is self-illuminating. He lights himself from inside, essentially like he's on fire the entire time. So we needed to see the global amount of how much he could light up and this is definitely taken to the extreme, and we have a couple of areas where he just gets white hot that we uh, have toned down quite a bit. Uh, and then this is, of course, just half the creature, and then it gets duplicated to the other side, and it makes it faster for the texture painter to be able to paint that way and see what the creature is going to look like before having to do twice the amount of work. Well, this is this is just the uh, the various views. This this is the view that um, we've finally seen up on screen. Um, and this is exactly the same moment seen from various different perspectives. You can twist your way around it to see uh, how things are looking from various angles. A little representation of where, where Gandalf is in the, in the final thing there. Uh, the difficult thing that I've been finding with this shot is getting the, uh, the transition between the Balrog coming forward in a threatening manner and, uh, and re the realisation that the supports have gone out from under his feet. There's a kind of a moment in between those, those two ideas that's uh, been a bit of a tricky transition to get. When a set dies, it goes to set heaven. We have this person called the Strike Master. Grant Fahey comes along with his little elves and destroy it. It's a, it's a fast process, and they start from the top, and they go to the bottom and sweep it out. It's all over. Tragedy. This links us to the satellite. We send UHF over about three kilometers. Then we send a satellite, God knows how long that goes. It goes to Wellington, then it goes uh, into space, and then it comes down again and goes to Tianao at the moment, because that's where the other guys are. <laughs> and this, come with me, I'll show you. <laughs> oh. Nope. <laughs>
<laughs> I just remembered we've got Peter with us today, so we don't have to send it anywhere. <laughs> that would be stupid. Kate Blanchett is travelling this way to walk across the river. Hi. Now you've got to go back the way that we come in in the mornings and you'll see the first set of cones and there's a couple of lights that come straight through the first path. Bring Kate in, but we have to drive her in. So Missy is establishing <laughs> the cleanest way to get Kate to set. I think Galadriel's all a bit poncy and a bit overexcited with her status. We don't all need boats. You could have got the bus, use public transport or the subway. The thing about Peter Jackson is he'll never ask you to do something unless he's done it first. So he's going to go in the water now. Mr. Frodo! Have a look at his feet, Marky. Where are you? Let's sit him down and have a look at his foot. You want to sit on the beach or you want to sit on the chair? Uh, we go okay. No, no, it's fine. All right, can I be? Just there was a stick pointing straight up in the water and I just landed right on it. Careful, careful, just uh, yeah, now it's bleeding too, so yeah, it's heavy back. Um, I mean I don't know how bottom of the foot and just peel it back so that we can get get out of the way. Good. You should probably elevate the leg more. Is that too high? Foot hurts. I actually had a premonition right before we start shooting that I was gonna get hurt, but I thought I was gonna get hurt jumping over the log. Oh, yeah. Lovely, lovely. Well, no, I just... Careful, Ooh. general. Right. There we go. Yeah. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, it doesn't... Yeah. yeah. Right. It's a lot of blood, man. So, Mike will get a... Um, it's a lot of blood. <laughs> a lot of blood. I'm probably going to need about three or four stitches there. This Hey, Mark. Is this special? Mm -hmm. Can you get us here? No, stick uh, it's going to be sore, but, um, you know, it uh, should be all right. It's an hour and a car to Tiano, and it's 20 minutes here to, to get a chopper here, and probably only 10 minutes to Tiano. Yeah, we'll go for that then. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, i got to be able to see the camera. i got to see the camera. Don't block the close-up during the trauma. It's screw going. It's screw going. Deeper and deeper into your shot now we should do a bit of a rehearsal with Sean just practicing with his error. Getting used to the error. Mm. Getting used to being a man with it with an error. Taking out other things. Stay clear, everybody. Stay clear. Everybody keep clear. <laughs> Whatever you do, keep clear. <laughs> Just like this, with the pom poms cheering me on. <laughs> Get me! Go L! Go to you! Go left! Idiot! It's a bit of. Aragorn running. Cool. Well, see, yeah, he, he goes to the list. Oh, so he, he does that. that. And he's then head back. off. Then cutting the action at Amenhand, the climactic battle at the end of the film, together, uh, there are a few things the editor asked for. Uh, no, he noticed that we needed a close-up where Argoin registers, after killing Lurts, he registers that his uh, compatriot Boromir is uh, dying, and he, he needs a moment to go from victory to... Tragedy, and he runs off Boromir. So we want to pick up that moment, and then we also want a moment where Marion Pippin uh, have realized they're about to be captured. There's a point of view of Eric approaching them. As you get into Richie, come down like this, and then like you're going down. Yes, they're only they're down here. I want it to look like you're coming right at the camera to pull. Actually, quite a lot of effort to be able to do this. Um, 
and I find myself conflicted. But right now, finishing the movie seems to me to be the most important thing, and helping Peter out in that fashion is appropriate on this film. It does take me away from a lot of other responsibilities I have. Raise your thought there. So, like that. Oh, he's mad. Saying goes off shooting his own film. There's very little relationship to, with the one that we're making, but we have to keep him humid. We have to keep him feeling happy and good. So we just give him a camera and a crew, and he's as happy as Larry. He stays off our backs. It's a brilliant scheme. Yeah. Go on. Yeah. That was great. Much better. Yep. Um, oh, Vigo. Sorry. Hey, Vigo, are you uh, on camera? No. Yeah. We could have used him. Hey. Do you give them in terms of what you do and takes or what you offer the other actor, the more chance of something interesting happening? If you don't do anything thinking, well, they'll never use it, then, then you're giving them nothing. And when we're going at the rate we're going here, it doesn't seem like it. Here I am fishing and all that, but, but that's because I'm waiting between shots. But um, we don't have much time to get it really right, so the more you can throw out there, the figure the better. I think I better go learn my lines. And forget about this for a while. You're killing machines. Move forward with the intention that you're going to kill. So keep it fluid, not stilted. Give it the best you can. Thank you. to make it a, a relatively hard PG-13, so it shouldn't be surprising if the first cut that we present gets an R rating and we have to go back and trim some shots. That would be the desire, so that we sort of, we get a P P G, but only just, um, only just sneak in, as it were, by having to trim some shots. And then, of course, whatever we trim can go in the DVD edition. Tight eyelids. Yeah, they. Oh, it's going in now. How's that feel? Just keep on looking down. Oops. That's good. Lift the bottom down. Good one, Bart. Can you That's open right. your eye, or is it too too much? No, it's fine. It's yeah. fine, he said. Oh. Hey, let's have a look. <laughs> yeah, okay. It's a freak fun. Yeah, it's fine. You'll arrive, the others will arrive behind you, Thomas will arrive, and then go. So it's, you're only probably on there for two or three seconds. And we'll make sure once they come, they'll come straight behind you, and just we'll make sure everybody stops in a, safely. Everyone, people should just move in and grab, grab a goblin. Yep. Grab a goblin. Grab a goblin. Got it then. The only difference between our background and our hero costumes for our goblins are pretty much as the hero lightweight chainmail which was conceptually thought and designed and produced for this particular film. It's a chainmail that's one fifth the weight of steel so the character is able to wear the costume for a long period of time without feeling any fatigue from any exhaustion or weight. Well, this is chainmail. Lots of it. This is a Moria Orc suit that I'm working on at the moment. There's 13,000 rings in one of these suits when it's finished. And it takes approximately three days to make up one of these suits. Some of the other suits are considerably more because the mail is a lot finer. Here I am putting together plastic rings and I love it. Absolutely mad as a meat axe, but I love it. And for me, it's been about five months of non-stop. Just the calluses on the ends of the fingers. 
Well, but we'll get there. Welcome to the bubble. Welcome to the bubble. This has been our home for what, last year? Two years. No, we only had the bubble for about a year. And the hostage. Oh, and the hostage, yes. We can't forget the hostage. He still hasn't coughed up his secrets. This is five million rings that we've put together. Which is ten kilometres worth of chain mail if every ring was stood on its edge. The only reason we know this is because the amount of materials that we've ordered through the supplier comes to 10 kilometres worth. There's twice as much chain mail as ever was originally asked for. And you, you can imagine how we felt when all of a sudden all these stunties are wearing chain mail at Helm's Deep and giving it absolute death. I'm sort of standing there thinking, well, I hope it all holds together because it was never originally planned to do that. And so far it has. With the guy. I'm just going to wash the blood off this one. Let's do it once more. Let's do it once more. Turn around, yep. Turn around. In the stomach. In the stomach. There, there. Gotcha. Well, this afternoon we've got the pleasure of Christopher Lee's company. Five, take two. Quite a few of us has, has seen throughout some really bad uh, noise, background noise, fans, yeah. you know, humming. So he's coming in to do um, his his um, ADR or looping, as they also call it, um, to to uh, replace his dialogue Great. lines. Power. Greatest. Power. No, I think it's power. You want more? I think power is the word. Three rings for the elven kings under the sky. In a sense, the most famous. it's the most famous quote of the whole it is. Yeah. work. And not only that, the way that you Seven doing for the dwarf lords and yes, their horses stone, nine for mortal men doomed to die. One for the dark lord yeah. on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. One ring to rule them all, one ring to, one ring to bring them all and in the darkness, bind them in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. I mean, that's so famous. In Moria, we translated a text that Philippa and Fran wrote that are based on the scenes of Moria and that the text was translated by David Sallow uh, into Dwarvish. Just, uh, just to fill you in on a little um, bit of musical history, Billy once did have a trumpet tree which he planted in his garden. Yeah, yeah, it was, uh, it was a, a lovely thing to see but then um, the council came and rooted it out. Premix mode, it's like we're building a house, you know, we're sort of going through all the different sounds and all the different ambiences. Yeah, I think you just have to punch it up a little bit. Hundreds of different tr different tracks and sort of deciding how that they, they should be juxtaposed to the film. For us, it's where we get to see the film sort of blossom into, uh, take a whole new dimension into what it ultimately is going to be as this wonderful experience. Peter was actually the sniffing of the wraiths. So Fran is the screaming and Peter is the sniffing. <laughs> we, had, we had two recorders going on our first scream and neither one of them could, could take it. Yeah. No, I, I know, I know. It's, it's amazing that she hit some frequency yeah. which is really disturbing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And a level too. Because <laughs> we were standing across the room and she just like went. <gasps> you felt my hair go. <laughs> and the paint was peeling. This is certainly not another movie. There's a lot of us are, are uh, sort of really made a lot of sacrifices to be able to be on this picture because we all believe in it so much. Welcome to Rivendell, Frodo Baggins. Have it all finished in a week and it'll be a release. It'll be with one down, two to go. But uh, I will have a little break, so. I'm sure I'll uh, feel much better after the break and launch into the cutting of film too.